Dear Mr. Chairman, again. Dear Honourable Jury, again. Dear lovely audience, again. Dear members of the uh, debating teams, again. Um, I was desperately scribbling down some notes for what to say in my last speech just then, whilst I was listening to the other's interesting arguments, and I was struggling for a structure. And so I must say it was much delightful for me to hear my last uh, opponent, so I forgot his name, three about Nate Blip. Blevins. It's um, <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, providing you a very neat, succinct structure. Very, very, thank you very much. Um, so, our colleague here mentioned a three part structure, which was uh, first of all, what is a British Empire? What, is, what does it mean to rule the world? And does the British Empire rule the world? And I have to say, it's been upsetting to hear that this debate has to some extent been quite cyclical, quite repetitive, in the sense that we've been struggling over some definitions. And although it's fortunate for me being in the last position to uh, give what I might esteem to be clarification of some issues, I would like to say a few key things about what an empire is, what the British Empire is. First of all, the British Empire is not the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is an independent yeah. organisation of voluntary, of which the members are voluntary uh, members uh, of this organisation. There is no sovereignty within this organisation. All countries are equal. The UK has no uh, power over the, other, o over the other countries. And sovereignty, I think, is an important factor of uh, empire. An empire is where one, this is according to uh, maybe an outdated definition, but an empire is where one country has sovereignty over, the, over other countries, both economically and politically, and often militarily. Um, and the Commonwealth no longer fits that model. However, there are some remnants of the British Empire existing, which we do acknowledge to be the legacy of our empire, in a strictly legal, formal sense. And those are our dispersed colonies across the world, that's to say the Falklands, etc. I find it somewhat fictitious to say that the hallmarks of the empire, that is our, our pervasive influence, still represent that empire and control it. I will go on to that in a second, if I may. Uh, moving on to the second point, briefly. What does it mean to rule? Our, our, uh, call, our oppo opponents from the other team have given a few dimensions as to what it means to rule, but, to rule, but they still insist that soft power in this modern globalised age is, suffi is sufficient. However, I must absolutely refute this, because if you were to imagine a situation where the UK and the, and the British Empire, more globally uh, stated, were to ask China to stop its meddling, it's a bit of a loaded term, sorry, stop its, uh, its territorial interests in the South China Sea, China would simply say, hello, you and whose you and army? It's a simple fact that military power is still essential in the modern world. Moving on, uh, economic and financial power. Um, it's very interesting that the opponents have argued that the positioning of very famous, very large investment banks, so I'll take you one second, uh, in the UK means that the UK exerts influence over the activities of those banks. One of the most famous banks in the City of London is UBS. It's a Swiss bank hosted in, in the City of London through which many international investments are made and are not the propriety of the UK or the British Empire more largely stated. Yes. yes. Okay, if it's military that rules the world, say, to go to harp on your previous example, how come the most powerful military nation we have ever seen in the United States doesn't seem to be able to have influence by using its guns? That's a very loaded question. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would state that indeed the, U the USA has had significant influence through its military activities, even if some of them have been somewhat disastrous, it is still the mainstay power in the universal, in the global system. Yeah. And it, it, has, it has military bases all across the world, from Guam to, uh, I can't remember the name of the one in the Indian Ocean, all across the world, and it still has a dominant influence controlling the Mal Malacca Strait and peace, uh, operating as a sort of an, an arbiter in, in South Asian disputes. Yes, yes. Does it rule the world then? Which you seem on your team to be defending that no one does, and if it does rule the world, why? Okay, I appreciate the questions. Moving me on very neatly to another topic, which I was going to go over, which is the fact that power is ultimately relative. And whilst it is nice to point that one country rules the world, and at one point the British Empire rules the world, it can never entirely be stated in such absolute terms. And as far as can be determined, it, it, certainly within the last century, the US was the dominant factor, both in, uh, in diplomatic circles, in political circles, and in military circles and also economic, uh, economic spheres in helping the restoration of Europe and many other countries devastated by the Second World War. It used that as a leverage for it to exert dominant influence across the world, both culturally and politically. If I may also uh, 
Uh, I'll, I'll round it now. I've lost track of the time. Um, the last point was, who then rules the world? As I've just stated, power is, an abs is a relative concept. But I'd like to just say why the British Empire does not rule. Because you've tried, it's difficult for me to say in absolute terms that the USA does rule. So why the, U why the British Empire does not rule is because of something which um, we have learned is called path dependency, which is in that history is ultimately evolutionary. Acts previous to a, a present act are determined by the act and will go on to determine future acts. The British Empire, yes, it does have an influence over the, the institutions and cultural system decisions and political decisions of countries that used to be members of the empire. But it does not have a dominant influence to the extent that it controls them and tells them what to do. It's, it would be offensive even to a person from India or from another Commonwealth country for them to be told that their decisions are making are not their own decisions, that they're disempowered by a pre-existing system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and furthermore, this leads to a problem of infinite regression because if we are to say that one, one country's, uh, at one point in time a country sets up a system and ultimately has a pervasive influence on the future, it denies the existence of all pre-existing history to them. And it's a necessary part of many cultures who are still part of the Commonwealth that their modern systems resort back to various uh, traditional and political values that were in the systems pre-existing the British Empire. So what I'd like to tell you is that the ruling of a country is a product of history, that that history is multi-layered and evolutionary. And on that basis, I would like to urge you to please uh, oppose this motion <laughs> in saying that the British Empire no longer rules the world. Thank you.